You're back? Yes. Where to? Let's go to the church. Okay. In this province-wide meeting, there were similar reports from churches from every area. Oh. Some co-workers from most churches have joined Eastern Lightning. They are going everywhere bearing witness to Almighty God. And quite a few believers have accepted this. That's really serious. We need to protect our flocks. Yes, it's a dangerous situation. If we don't take action immediately, our churches and everything we've built will fall apart. You're right. We have to convene church co-workers as soon as possible so we can stop Eastern Lightning from stealing our sheep. Hello? Pastor Xin, there's a problem. What's wrong? Chun Yixin and Su Jie have accepted Eastern Lightning. What? <laughs> They're having a meeting about Eastern Lightning at Chun Yixin's house right now. Some people in our church have accepted Eastern Lightning. We need to take care of this. I'm on my way. Go. Sister Sung. Yes. We've been reading a lot of Almighty God's words. It fills our hearts with joy. That's yes. great. The prophecies of the Revelation have been fulfilled. Almighty God's words are the Holy Spirit speaking to the churches. He is Christ in the last days. We are completely certain of this. Yes. yes. I'm certain Thanks too. To Thanks to God. Thanks to God. We shared the gospel with some brothers and sisters yesterday. Hearing Almighty God's words has made them want to look into the true way. That's great. Most of the prophecies of the Lord's return have been fulfilled, mm. and the great disaster is upon us. They felt the Lord Jesus had returned. They just didn't know where or how he appeared. As soon as they heard Almighty God's words, they felt that they are the truth with authority and power. Exactly. They asked us, is this the return of the Lord Jesus? I said that Almighty God is the reappearance of the Lord Jesus. Mm. If he were human, could he express God's truth? That's right. That's right, right, of course. Yes, they're all feeling really anxious. Hmm. They want to hear your fellowship and testimony. Yeah. Hey, do you think we could set a time up to meet with them? Sure. Great. Would tomorrow work for you too? Sounds good. Wonderful. Thanks to God. Thanks to God. Mm. The entire religious world has become desolate. They don't follow the Holy Spirit's work. In their gatherings, they just talk about worldly things. The pastor's sermons are so dry. There's no light in them. They're <gasps> dull and stagnant. Yes. Many hope for the Lord's return, but don't see His coming. They've all seen that the great disaster is upon us. They have lost all faith and love. They fell into darkness and are waiting for the Lord to come save them. Now the Lord has returned and is doing the work of judgment of the last days. Hmm. He'll save those who long for His appearance. Make a group of overcomers before disaster and bring them into His kingdom. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. We must consider God's will and should bear witness to Almighty God's appearance. We should spread the word. Mm. Yes. This way they'll be able to hear God's voice and return before His throne. This is what God wills. Amen. Yes. Many who believe in the Lord hope for His appearance. We must hurry to help save them. Yes. If they could just hear God's voice, ah, I know they would rejoice. That's Thanks right. to God. Huh? It's fine. I'll go take a look. Mom, here. Put these books away. Here's another one. Quick, hide them. Pastor Shin is here. Ah, Brother Chun. Hi, Brother Shin. Pastor Shin is here. Come in, Pastor Shin. Pastor Hello, Shin, Pastor Elder Shen. Son. Please come. Have a seat. Have a seat. Sit down. Have Please. A seat. Yes, sit down. Sister Chun, Sister Su, I handed our people over to you so you could shepherd them and get cultivation. Yes. But I never imagined that you would accept Eastern Lightning. 
and you then lead other believers onto their way. You have strayed from the Lord's way. You betrayed him. You need to turn back immediately, confess and repent to the Lord. Otherwise, your sin of betraying the Lord will cost you dearly. Hmm. Yes. You will certainly be punished in hell. You've worked so hard all these years in your faith in the Lord. Wouldn't it all be in vain? Pastor Shin, don't get upset. Let's have a seat and talk. Yes. Pastor, sit please sit talk. down. Please sit. Let's sit down Elder son, talk. have a seat. Here, Sister Sun. Recently, we've heard Eastern Lightning's preachings and read a lot of Almighty God's words. We've seen that His words are the truth, the voice of God. There is no doubt. We've determined from our hearts that Almighty God truly is the appearance of the Lord Jesus. Yes. yes. We were planning to share the gospel with you in a couple of days, but you showing up here now must have been arranged by Thanks the Lord. To the Thanks Lord. to the Lord. <sighs> Sister Sung from the Church of Almighty God is here too. She can share testimony on Almighty God's work in the last what days. What are you talking about? Testimony on Almighty God? Huh. You're so presumptuous. Yes. If the Lord Jesus had really returned, as pastors and elders, wouldn't we know? Eastern Lightning wouldn't have to give testimony? All these years, so many pastors and elders have condemned Eastern Lightning, saying that it's heresy, saying that it's not true at all. This proves that Eastern Lightning is not the true way. Right. It's not permitted to look into Eastern Lightning. We've said it again and again. Why can't you just listen, huh? You have been deceived. And now you're helping the Eastern Lightning people steal sheep from the church. How ignorant can you be, huh? Hmm. We're here to save you, rescue you from these people. Yes. Ignore everything she tells you. Reject Eastern Lightning and repent to the Lord. Hmm. Pastor Shin, you're mistaken in saying so. You haven't listened to the preachings of Eastern Lightning, and you haven't read Almighty God's words. You're just blindly condemning it. You may be resisting God. Yeah. yeah. What Eastern Lightning refers to is very clear. This is from the Lord Jesus' prophecy. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Eastern lightning is the Lord's appearance and work in the last days. It is. We've investigated eastern lightning, and it is entirely in line with the Bible and the Lord's words. Yes. Oh, yes. please. Pastor Shin, there are so many good sheep who have heard Almighty God's words and have acknowledged that they are the truth, that it is God's voice, and they have accepted Eastern Lightning. This shows that Eastern Lightning contains the truth and that it really comes from God. The Lord Jesus said, At midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Amen. Amen. Pastor Shin, Elder Son, let's listen to the testimony from a member of Eastern Lightning. Investigating is in line with the Lord's will. Yes, Pastor Shin. First listen to Almighty God's words and investigate His work in the last yes. days. Brother Chen. Pastor Shen, Elder Son. We believers in the Lord most long to welcome the Lord's coming and be raptured into the heavenly kingdom. That's right. Now that the Lord Jesus has returned. How dare you? You're not qualified to preach. Believe me, you have no right to open your mouth. You even dare steal sheep from our church? You have some nerve. Time to go. You better get out of here right now, or we'll make you. Go! Get out! Hey, hey, now. hey! Don't Everyone calm down. What do you think you're doing? You just got here, but you've already condemned them. Where's your humility or desire to seek? Yeah. yeah. Are your actions in line with the Lord's will? No That's way. Right. This is for your own good. We're all brothers and sisters in God. How could you not have any love? Love? 
Eastern Lightning is heresy, and anyone spreading heresy is not a brother or sister. Right! What love could there be? Get out of here Don't. now! Don't! Brother Meow! <sighs> Pastor Shen, Elder Sun, if you're willing to seek and investigate the true way, we can sit down and have fellowship. But it seems you've come to disrupt us. <sighs> I'd like you to leave. Shen Yixing! You've been so thoroughly deceived, you are beyond redemption. Chunisin, Sutsia, I'm warning you. If you don't repent, and you still bring Eastern Lightning people to the church to steal sheep, you can't blame me if I turn against you? Don't do anything you'll regret. Let's go. <laughs> It looks like we need to share the gospel with our brothers and sisters as soon as possible. Sujia, let's split up the forces. Okay. Co-workers, Chun Yixin and Suji believe in Almighty God now. Believe in Almighty God? And they're going around with Eastern Lightning people, stealing sheep. They've stolen many good sheep. How should we handle this? Please, make suggestions. Those two have preached the gospel for over a decade. They understand the Bible and truly believe in the Lord. Yes. How could they believe in Eastern Lightning? That's right. That's right. Pastor Shen, we should have fellowship with them. See what's really going on and go from there. They're important in the church. They've worked for the Lord for years. Especially Sister Chen. She was arrested by the CCP and went to jail for four years. She suffered a lot. Now that they've been deluded, we should think of a way to save them. Right. We should save right. them. We should save them. Right. We should save them. You think that Pastor Shen and I haven't tried? We've kindly urged them to uphold the Bible and the Lord's way. But they use Almighty God's words as a rebuttal, and they are clear and logical. I think they really believe in Almighty God and won't budge an inch. There's no hope of saving them. Now, they're bringing Eastern Lightning people to churches and stealing sheep. This is going against us and betraying the Lord. Therefore, I propose expelling them. Expelling them? That's not right. Why not? Those who ignore the pastors and elders and betray the Lord should be expelled. But they're important co-workers in the church. It's clear. They betrayed the Lord. They must be expelled. Along with anyone else who believes in this, Eastern Lightning. Sister Chen, if you're here to preach Eastern Lightning, I won't accept it. The pastors and elders say that God's words are all in the Bible and that they don't exist outside of the Bible. Believing in the Lord and Bible are the same. Parting from that is heresy. Eastern Lightning goes beyond the Bible, so it's heresy. <sighs> Sister Chen, you served the Lord for years, and you know the Bible well. You should know this. How could you accept Eastern Lightning? Sister Liu, is there a biblical basis for what they're saying? Did the Lord Jesus say that? Did the Holy Spirit testify to that? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus, or do you believe in the pastors and elders? You must be clear on this. You can't be muddle-headed. When the Lord Jesus appeared and did the work of redemption, that was outside the Old Testament. Isn't accepting the pastors and elders' words, denying and condemning the Lord Jesus' work? Sister Leo, our faith in the Lord must be based on His words. We can't blindly listen to people. 
if it's really as they say, and God's work and words are only in the Bible. Consider what the Apostle John said. There are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. How can that be explained? And this prophecy from the Lord Jesus, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. How could that be fulfilled? I never considered that. Sister Leo, think about it. God is the creator. His authority is above all else. Could his work and words be limited to only those words that are recorded in the Bible? Could it be that he can't do new work or speak new words that aren't in the Bible? Every step of his work is a new start. How could it be recorded beforehand? Sister Leo, we're all the Lord's believers. We must seek the truth. We can't blindly listen to the pastors. Only the Lord is the truth. In faith, we can't follow people. Sister Chun, what you said has merit, but I can't ignore the pastors and elders. Listening to you and accepting Eastern Lightning, I'd be expelled from the church. Then wouldn't all of my years of faith be in vain? Oh, Sister Leo. I have to go. I have something hey, to do. Hey, Sister Leo. Sister Leo. Sister Leo. Hi, Sister Chen. Is Sister Jung here? Yes. What are you doing here? Go away. Sister Jung, listen. Why go not let on. her in? You believe in Eastern Lightning. You've betrayed the Lord Jesus, and now you've come to dupe me. Get out. Sister Jung. Out. Sister Jung. Sister Jung? Go away. Go away. Pastor said not to have you here. You're not welcome here. Get out. Pastor Shen won't Sister, allow us hear to me meet out. with you. Sister. Go on, go on. Sister. Hi, Sister Xia. Why are you here? The pastors and elders said you betrayed the Lord. Get out of here. Go. Sister Xia. Go, go. Hear me out. Hey, Sister Xia. Sister Xia. Are you aware of the burden you shoulder, your commission, and your responsibility? Where is your historic sense of mission? What plans do you have for the progress of the next step of work? How many people are waiting for you to be their shepherd? Is your task a heavy one? They are poor, pitiable, blind, and at a loss wailing in the darkness. Where is the way? How they yearn for the light, like a shooting star, to suddenly descend and disperse the force of darkness that has oppressed men for so many years. Who can know just how anxiously they hope and how they pine day and night for this? How grieved and anxious could he be? A 
How can he bear to watch mankind suffer? Whom he created by his own hands. Mankind are the poisoned unfortunates, and though they have survived till today, they have long been poisoned by the evil one. Have you forgotten that you are a victim yourself? Don't you want for your love of God to save those who have survived? To repay God with all of your effort? Who loves man like his own flesh and blood? How do you Stand being used by God to live an extraordinary life. Do you have a real desire and confidence to live a meaningful life of piety? A life. Brothers and sisters, let's read more of Almighty God's words. Okay. Almighty God says, The work of the last days is to separate all according to their kind, to conclude the management plan of God. For the time is near, and the day of God has come. God brings all who have entered his kingdom, that is, all those who have been loyal to him to the end, into the age of God himself. Amen. However, until the coming of the age of God himself, the work that God shall do is not to observe the deeds of man or to inquire into the life of man, but to judge his rebellion. For God shall purify all those who come before his throne, all those who have followed the footsteps of God to this day, are those who have come before the throne of God. And this being so, every single person who accepts God's work in its final phase is the object of God's purification. Amen. Thanks be to God. People from the church, I'll go look. Oh, I'll go. Who is it? It's me. Co-workers Miao and Ju, hello. Brother Jung, huh? why weren't you at our last meeting? Pastor Shen wanted us to come see you. Oh, thanks to the Lord. Do you have guests? Oh, Sisters Chen and Su are sharing fellowship. What? Sister Chen? It's great that you're here now. Come join us. The pastor and elders won't let us meet with them. Yeah. How can you listen to them? Have you been deluded? Brother Zhang, isn't this going against the pastor and elders? Won't it be bad if they find out? They'll expel you. Yeah. Get them out of here. Yeah. Brother Miao, Brother Ju, we've always listened to the pastor and elders and have never studied Eastern Lightning. These last few days, I've heard their fellowship and testimony. I feel it makes a lot of sense and is in line with the Bible. I know this coming together was arranged by the Lord. Why don't you come and have fellowship with everyone? Brother Meow is here. Brother Meow is here. Brother Meow. Brother Meow. How, can you, how can you look into Eastern Lightning? Yeah. They bear witness that the Lord Jesus has returned and express truths to do the work of judgment of the last days to purify and save the people. They say that they've already been raptured. How can any of you think that's possible? It's not. Hmm? The pastors and elders say that the Lord Jesus said it is finished on the cross, meaning that God's work of saving mankind was finished. Right. Our sins have been forgiven by believing in the Lord, and we've received salvation by grace. Amen. When the Lord comes, he'll bring us up into the kingdom of heaven. 
That's all there is to salvation. Eastern Lightning's preaching goes against the Bible and is considered heresy in religious circles. You, why would you want to investigate it? Huh? Brother Meow, have a seat so we can talk. Here, sit down and That's listen. right. The Lord Jesus took on all of our sins. The Lord doesn't see us as sinners anymore. By believing we have already been saved, salvation is once and for all. Amen. As long as we uphold the Lord Jesus' salvation of the cross, when the Lord returns, he will bring us into the kingdom of heaven. This is what he promised. Right. So, I think that when he returns, he won't do any work of judgment and purification. I don't think we can go wrong if we follow the Bible and uphold the Bible. Amen. Brother Miao, Brother Ju, have a seat. We can all have fellowship on anything that's unclear. It yeah, will all make sense in a moment. And have, have a seat. Day. Let's been discuss. Here all day and it's been so wonderful. Brother Miao, Brother Ju, the pastors say that the Lord Jesus saying, it is finished on the cross, refers to God saving mankind being finished. Then why did the Lord Jesus say this? I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Amen. Amen. As it's said in 1 Peter, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. We can see from the biblical prophecies that the Lord will come and do the work of judgment in the last days and guide people to enter into all truths. If you go by the pastor and elder's words, how could these prophecies be fulfilled? They couldn't. Could the Lord's prophecies really be false? They couldn't. They truly couldn't. Coworker Miao, coworker Ju, can you explain this to us clearly? The Lord's words are clear. He'll come in the last days to utter words and judge mankind. Yes. We've been misled by the pastors. We wanted to get into the kingdom of heaven, but never paid attention to his words. Yes. They don't understand the Bible either. We can't believe anything they say. Yes. They can't be trusted. Hey, how can you be so confused? They're always explaining the scripture. If they don't understand it, who does? We should follow what they say. Stick to the Bible, no matter what. It's right for us to uphold the Bible in our faith. But in waiting for the Lord's coming, we must be sure to listen for his voice. Because every time God does a new work, he utters new words. These aren't in the Bible. Yes. So, how God will come, what work he will do, and how he will do it, are all things we can't foresee. Exactly. Exactly. So we must keep focus on seeking the Lord's voice and the Holy Spirit's words so that we can welcome the Lord. Yes. yes. Okay. Let's read some of Almighty God's words about why God's work of the last days is judging and purifying mankind. Right. Almighty God says, at the time, Jesus' work was the redemption of all mankind. The sins of all who believed in him were forgiven. As long as you believed in him, he would redeem you. If you believed in him, you were no longer a sinner. You were relieved of your sins. This is what it meant to be saved and to be justified by faith. Yet in those who believed, there remained that which was rebellious and opposed God, and which still had to be slowly removed. Salvation did not mean man had been completely gained by Jesus, but that man was no longer of sin, that he had been forgiven his sins. Provided you believed, you would never more be of sin. To man, God's crucifixion concluded the work of God's incarnation, redeemed all of mankind, and allowed him to seize the key to Hades. Everyone thinks God's work has been fully accomplished. In actuality, to God, only a small part of his work has been accomplished. He has only redeemed mankind. He has not conquered mankind let alone changed the ugliness of Satan in man. 
That is why God says, although my incarnate flesh went through the pain of death, that was not the whole goal of my incarnation. Jesus is my beloved son and was nailed to the cross for me, but he did not fully conclude my work. He only did a portion of it. A sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? For you, you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by Jesus and that you are not counted as a sinner because of the salvation of God. But this does not prove that you are not sinful and are not impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish and mean. Yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God. For you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man, which is the key step of changing and perfecting. And so you, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Amen. 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 Through this work of judgment and chastisement, man will fully come to know the filthy and corrupt substance within him, and he will be able to completely change and become clean. Only in this way can man be worthy to return before the throne of God. All the work done this day is so that man can be made clean and be changed through judgment and chastisement by the word, as well as refinement, man can cast away his corruption and be made pure. Amen. Amen. Rather than deeming this stage of work to be that of salvation, it would be more apt to say it is the work of purification. Amen. Thanks be to God. Sister Chun, yes. I'd like to read. Great. The essence of God's work of chastisement and judgment is to cleanse humanity, and it is for the day of final rest. Otherwise, the whole of humanity will not be able to follow their own kind or enter into rest. This work is humanity's only path to enter into rest. Only God's work of cleansing will cleanse humanity of their unrighteousness, and only His work of chastisement and judgment will bring to light those disobedient things among humanity, thereby separating those who can be saved from those who cannot, and those who will remain from those who will not. When his work ends, those people who remain will be cleansed and enjoy a more wonderful second human life upon the earth as they enter a higher realm of humanity. In other words, they will enter into humanity's day of rest and live together with God. After those who cannot remain have undergone chastisement and judgment, their original forms will be entirely revealed. After this, they will all be destroyed and, like Satan, will no longer be allowed to survive upon the earth. The humanity of the future will no longer contain any of this type of people. These people are not fit to enter the land of ultimate rest, nor are they fit to enter the day of rest that God and man will share. For they are the targets of punishment and are the wicked, and they are not righteous people. His ultimate work of punishing evil and rewarding good is entirely done in order to utterly purify all of humanity, so that he may bring an entirely holy humanity into eternal rest. This stage of his work is his most crucial work. It is the final stage of the whole of his management work. Amen. Thanks be to God. God's words are wonderful. Almighty God's words really clarified the significance of the Lord Jesus' work of redemption in the Age of Grace and why God is doing the work of judgment in the last days. Brother Miao, 
Brother Jew, do you still think that when the Lord Jesus said it is finished on the cross, that referred to God's work of saving mankind? Do the pastors and elders have a biblical basis for saying this? Is that what the Lord Jesus said? Has the Holy Spirit given testimony to this? No. Since that's the case, isn't what the pastors and elders say nothing but human notions and imaginations? Yes, they're just making assumptions about it. Yes. The Lord Jesus' crucifixion in the Age of Grace was just the work of redemption to redeem us from our sins so we could escape the condemnation and damnation of the law. We believe in the Lord. We confess and repent so our sins are forgiven. We enjoy the peace, joy, and blessings given to us by the Lord. Thank the Lord. This is what it means to gain salvation by grace. Amen. Amen. From our faith, we have been saved and our sins forgiven. But we cannot deny that. Our innate sinful natures and satanic dispositions are still there. We are still bound and constrained by sin. We often lie and cheat. We're also very arrogant, selfish, cunning and greedy, always thinking of ourselves. Yes. We only work for the Lord because we want to enter the kingdom of heaven. We blame the Lord the moment we encounter persecution. We even deny the Lord. Yes. The Bible says, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. Amen. So what do you think? We frequently rebel against and resist God, and we can enter the kingdom of heaven? No. 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 Through our faith, we have been saved by grace. Does that mean we have escaped from sin and have become holy? No, they don't. Does that mean God has given us full salvation? No. no. We frequently rebel against the Lord. How could we gain full salvation? True. True. Thanks be to God. Now everyone should be clear. The Lord Jesus' work of redemption was just one part of God's work to save mankind. Definitely not all of it. Because God had not fully gained mankind. Yes. In the last days, on the foundation of the Lord Jesus' work of redemption, Almighty God has expressed truths to do the work of judging and purifying mankind so that we can escape sins and become people who obey and worship God. Finally, those people can enter God's kingdom. <laughs> Almighty God's work of judgment is the most critical, fundamental work that can fully purify and save mankind. It is. God's work to save mankind will be completed only when Almighty God's work of the last days is done. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Almighty God's last day's work totally fulfills the Lord Jesus' prophecy. He that sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do inequity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Amen. God uses his work of judgment to expose everyone and divide people according to their kind. Those who refuse to heed God's voice, who deny and condemn God in the flesh, will all be exposed. They will ultimately fall into disaster and be punished. Those who listen to God's voice and turn toward God will go into his kingdom after undergoing God's judgment and purification of the last days. Amen. This fulfills the prophecy stated in Revelation 21. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. It is done. I am Alpha and, and Omega, Omega, the, the beginning, beginning and, and the end. end. I will, I will give, give to him that is thirsty of the, of the fountain of the water of life freely. Thanks Amen. be to God. Now we can drink freely from the fountain of the water of life. Yes, we are so blessed. So what is the context of the Lord saying? It is done here. What was what the, context? the context? Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> At this time, God has renewed everything, and humanity has achieved holiness. A new heaven and earth has appeared. 
A new Jerusalem has come from heaven, and God's tabernacle is with men. God lives among them. They are his people in his kingdom. There are no more tears, no death, no sorrow. Only this is the sign of God completing the work of saving mankind. Amen. Brothers and sisters, has mankind become holy now? Has God's kingdom been realized? Have the satanic demons been eradicated? No. 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 Since that's not the case, how could we say that God's work of salvation is done? Yeah, the pastors don't understand the Lord's word. They're just deceiving people. We've all been misled. Yes. yes. They have said that the Lord Jesus' words, it is finished, mean that God's work of salvation is done. Is this in line with the facts of God's work? It's not. Isn't this interpreting the Lord's words in their own way? Aren't they misinterpreting the Lord's words to mislead others? You! How can you say that? The pastor... Brother Jew. The Lord Jesus prophesied that in the last days he would come to separate good servants from evil servants, sheep from goats, wheat from tares, wise virgins from foolish virgins. Revelation prophesied that God would make a group of overcomers in the last days, that his kingdom would come to earth. These are all things the Lord will achieve when he returns. And now in Almighty God's appearance and work, he has revealed the good and the evil servants, the wheat and the tares, the wise and foolish virgins. Also, he has made a group of overcomers with resounding experiences and testimonies. In following Christ, they have been brutally pursued and persecuted by the Chinese government. Other religious groups call the police when they're preaching. They've been imprisoned and suffered horrible torture. After release, they still bear witness to the kingdom gospel. Anyone can see this. Amen. The truth of the religious world resisting God has also come out. It has met with God's damnation and become a wasteland. The facts are right in front of you. Can't you see them? Can't they? The pastors have determined that the Lord Jesus saying, it is finished, refers to God's work of salvation. It's absurd, ridiculous. This denies God's work of the last days. It's really harmful and deceitful. Right. I understand now. The Lord Jesus saying it is finished referred to his work of redemption, not to God's work of saving mankind being done. Right. Right. Yes, the pastors and elders really twist the they Lord's do. words they around. Do. They've really done a number True. on us. I admit, you explained the Lord Jesus' work of redemption clearly. But I cannot accept your testimony that Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned. Yes. Because none of this is in the Bible. And we must uphold the Bible in our faith. That's right. If it's not in the Bible, we can't believe it. Hmm. Come on, let's go. There's only one way to keep Chun Yi Sin and Su Ji from coming back to the church to steal sheep. Report them and have them arrested. Yes, I agree. I'd do anything to save our flock. We should report them to the police now to protect the church. That's a good idea. We should have done this before. Chen reported you. The police are on their way. Meet me at the intersection. I'll tell Jong. Okay. Hurry up. 
into our home. What are you doing? Where's your daughter? Tell me! Speak up! She's not home. Search it. Yes, sir. Hey! What are you doing? You can't come in here! Do you have a warrant? You can't just randomly search homes. This way! Over there! Hurry up! Go! Stop! Stop! Damn it, where'd they go? Over there! Get them! Go! It's lucky Sister Dong got there in time. Otherwise, we wouldn't have made it. Yeah. That was close. In communist China, spreading the gospel can get us arrested. I never imagined. I can't believe Pastor Shen would report you for sharing the gospel with others. He's a pastor. How could he do something like that? Even if they won't accept the true way, they shouldn't sell you out or report you. It's malicious, it really is. When the Lord Jesus appeared and worked, the Pharisees also united with the satanic government to persecute his disciples, right? It's true. The pastors and elders are reporting us. We can't share the gospel here, so we have to go elsewhere. The Lord Jesus said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the middle of wolves. Be you therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. But when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another. For I truly say to you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Amen. Amen. These days, the religious world is dark and desolate. Many true believers are still bound and controlled by pastors and elders. They can't hear God's voice or see his appearance. Let's go somewhere else to keep bearing witness to God's work of the last days. Expanding the gospel of the kingdom, this is God's commission for us. You're right. We should consider God's burden and expand the gospel of the kingdom. This is God's will. Yes. Thanks to God. Sister Chen, Sister Su, be extremely careful when going out to preach the gospel. Pray to God, rely on Him. Hey, Sister Young, how are things? Hey, Pastor Sao. Young Sing is meeting with the Eastern Lightning Preachers again. 
Pastor Sao and Elder Ma know I firmly believe in Almighty God. They've expelled me and have told everyone to have nothing to do with me. <sighs> they threaten them, saying, anyone who listens to Eastern Lightning must be cut off. Anyone who believes in Eastern Lightning will be expelled. <sighs> I'd like you to share the gospel with brothers Jung and Lee. But I'm worried they won't listen. Sister Young, do you think they have a thirst for the truth? How is their ability to accept truth? Are they clear on what the pastors and elders are really about? Their understanding of the truth is really pure. They're always seeking the truth. Really? Yes. They often disagree with the pastor. They seem to have some discernment. The pastor told the church to report witnesses of Almighty God to the police. They were against it the whole time. They said this was treachery and would offend the Lord. The brothers are good people, and I think they love the truth. Hmm. Mm. We should share the gospel with them. They seem all right. Those God will save are good people who love the truth. That's right. Thanks be to God. The Lord Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. We should give them testimony on God's work at the last days and read Almighty God's words to them. If they are God's sheep, they will hear his voice and accept the true way. Tomorrow we can go to Brother Jung's place. Great. Great. Thanks be to God. Let's go. Brother Jung, Brother Lee, if you have any other questions, we can discuss them in more detail. Yes. Yes. I have a question. Pastor Sao, it's those two. Pastor Chow. Who said you could preach here? Did I say it was okay? Of course not. We've worked so hard to build up this church. These are our sheep. Yeah. We've taken care of them. That's right. But you just come in here to preach without my permission. You are stealing our sheep. You have some nerve. Yeah. Pastor Zhao, brothers and sisters are God's sheep. They belong to no man. How can you say that they are yours? Do you have a biblical basis for saying that? Do these people belong to you or to God? It's quite brazen, don't you think? To say that they're yours? Young Xing, how dare you say that? You're trying to seize God's sheep. Don't you see the problem? Brothers and sisters, we should think about this carefully. What is an evil servant? What is an antichrist? It's determined by their attitude towards Christ and God's chosen people. Now that the Lord Jesus has returned and is almighty God in the flesh, spreading the gospel and witnessing God's work so that more people can hear God's voice and meet his return. Yes. It's God's commission. Why would this need approval from you? You are pastors and elders. You know people say the Lord has returned. Not only have you refused to guide brothers and sisters to welcome the Lord, but you've blocked them from seeking the Lord's voice. Is this in line with God's will? Not at all. The Lord Jesus said, But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Pastor Zhao, how can you act like that, like the Pharisees did? Young Saint, let me tell you! Pastor Tiao, have a seat and tell us. Here, have a seat. Take your time. Everyone have a seat. Sit down, please. Pastor Tiao, we've believed in the Lord for years, always awaiting his return. Now they say he's returned, expressed his truth, and is doing the work of judgment in the last days. We should lead brothers and sisters to look into this. Look into what? They say the Lord Jesus has returned, that he is almighty God incarnate. There's no biblical proof of that. Yeah, there's nothing in the Bible about this. Matthew 24, 29, 30. What does it say? Okay, let's take a look. 
Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus clearly stated that in the last days, the Lord will come in the clouds with great power and glory, that heaven and earth will shake, everyone will see. If the Lord has returned, then why hasn't this happened? Yeah, have any of you seen that? Where is the rapture? Yeah. So, I'm certain that any Lord Jesus who doesn't come down on a cloud is false. Anything about God coming again in the flesh is heresy. It's a lie. And we can't believe it. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we can't listen to them anymore. They should be expelled. Pastor Tsiao, there are many prophecies in the Bible about the Lord's return. Are you absolutely certain that he'll only descend on a white cloud? You dare delimit him? The Lord Jesus said, Behold, I come as a thief and at midnight. There was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Amen. The Lord Jesus also said, For as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Amen. Amen. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It says in these prophecies that the Lord will come as a thief, the coming of the Son of Man. He will stand at the door and knock. Doesn't this mean that aside from coming down to us on a cloud, he also has secret ways of coming? That's true. What is this? Based on your notions, if God only came down to us on a cloud, how can the prophecies of him coming secretly be fulfilled? Everyone knows that the Lord will come on a cloud with great glory and power and appear to all people. At that time, the stars will fall from heaven. It will shake heaven and earth, and everyone will see it. If it was true that the Lord can only appear on a cloud, would we need to hear, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him? We wouldn't. Then how can this prophecy be fulfilled? And the Lord coming as a thief, and him knocking at the door, how will these prophecies be fulfilled? Brothers and sisters, give it some thought. Everyone will see the Lord appearing on a cloud, and they will certainly fall down to the ground in terror. Then who would resist or condemn him? That's right. So how can the Lord's words, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation, be in any way fulfilled? Pastor Xiao, can you explain this to everyone? There are so many prophecies about the Lord's return that you haven't fully examined. You've just determined that he'll descend on a cloud from one or two pages of scripture. Isn't this arbitrary? Aren't you misleading people? Pastor Xiao, you're saying that the Lord's return can only happen if he is coming down on a cloud? Oh, he really can't say that. The Lord's prophecy is clear. His return is the coming of the Son of Man. First must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Doesn't this refer to the God in the flesh? Yes, yes. We've been reading the Bible all these years, so why haven't we seen this? That's right. The Lord prophesied many times that he'd return as the Son of Man like a thief. How have we overlooked these critical words and waiting for his return? This is our greatest mistake. Everyone, in the last days, Almighty God's appearance and work have completely fulfilled the Lord's prophecies. When he returns, he'll become flesh and come in secret. 
Express truths to do the work of judgment, beginning with God's house. Purify and save all those who are raptured before his throne. Yes. He'll create some overcomers before the disaster. After all of the overcomers have been made, God's work in the flesh will be done. And then the great disaster will occur. And after that, God will appear to all peoples around the world on a white cloud, fulfilling the Lord's prophecy. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. Amen. Almighty God says, Many people may not care what I say, but I still want to tell every so-called saint who follows Jesus that when you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, this will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heaven is also the time when you go down to hell to be punished. It will herald the end of God's management plan and will be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs when there is only the expression of truth. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs and thus have been purified, shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not ride upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment. For they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs, but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. And so it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. They are too stubborn, too confident in themselves, too arrogant. How could such degenerates be rewarded by Jesus? Amen. I understand. The prophecies of the Lord's return, that's how they'll happen. He'll come in secret, and he'll come in the flesh. Make a group of overcomers, and then openly appear on a cloud. These years, listening to the pastors and elders, we waited for the Lord on a cloud to take us to His kingdom, never seeking the Lord's voice or studying Almighty God's work in the last days. We've been foolish and ignorant. Everyone, we're lucky to have heard their testimony. Otherwise, we just hear the pastors and elders and never learn the true way we would condemn God's work of the last days along with them. We'd be just like the Pharisees who resisted the Lord Jesus. Believers who resist God. That's perilous. Brother Zhang. Brother Lee. Their fellowship follows the Bible. That's true. Then we should listen. Yes. But if the Lord had returned, wouldn't the pastors and elders know? That's right. That's right. They would. And would they be used to give testimony? Would they? They absolutely wouldn't. You are all important co-workers and have worked for the Lord for years. You have studied the Bible. I never thought, after a few days of preachings of Eastern Lightning, you'd be deceived. You can't take a stance. You're undiscerning. The Lord Jesus said that Antichrists would appear in the last days to mislead people. So, I am certain those who give testimony to God coming in the flesh are all liars. Anything outside of the Bible claiming to be the truth is false and not accepted. Taking our brothers and sisters to look into Eastern Lightning is leading the flock astray and betraying the Lord. Pastor Tsiao. As the pastor, I'm responsible for protecting you and defending the true way. Amen. You're forbidden from hearing Eastern Lightning's preaching. Fine, fine, meeting adjourned. Don't listen to them anymore. Go home. You can go. 
Pastor Sal, everyone is free to study the true way. Why are you obstructing them? This isn't something leaders should do. Shut up! Young Xing, you've been expelled. You can't speak here. Ah. Get her! What kind of believers are you? Stop hitting her! Sister Chen, Sister Sue, come in, hurry. No one has lived here for a long time, so it's a little messy. Here, sit down. They don't know about this house. It's safe, so you can stay here. Okay. Relax. You don't need to help. It's no problem. Those people are vicious. They're hardly Christians. Aren't they acting as evil servants? I can't believe it. Sister Young. Yes? We need to think of a way to have fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Yes. Mm. Okay. Then I'll talk to Sister Zhao. See if we can meet at her house. Wonderful. Great. We can have them over there later. Great. Great. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. Come in, everyone. Come in. Have a seat. This place isn't bad. Yes, it's very quiet. Thanks be to God. Here, everyone, take a seat. Sister Chen, Sister Sue, if I may, I have a question. Of course. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because of what's recorded in the Bible and the Holy Spirit's work. Because the Lord Jesus was nailed to the cross to redeem mankind and take on our sins. That's why we accepted that the Lord Jesus was God's Son, that He was Christ. Your fellowship and testimony these few days has shown our hearts that in the last days, God has returned in the flesh as the Son of Man to do the work of judgment. This is in line with the Bible. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Yes. Before, we didn't know the truth of God's incarnation. We blindly believed the fallacies of the CCP and religious authorities. We saw Almighty God as just a regular person. Right. We never sought or studied His work of the last days. I think that today, I'd like to know more about Incarnation. How can you know Almighty God is God in the flesh? We need to understand this. We really don't understand this. Please share your fellowship. Thanks be to God. Brother Jung, your question is very practical. Believers know the Lord Jesus was God in the flesh. But as for what Incarnation really is, and how to recognize God in the flesh, no one has understood this mystery of truth for thousands of years. Yes, we really don't understand. When the Lord Jesus, in the flesh, appeared and worked among the Jews, He suffered the persecution of the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees. In the last days, Almighty God has incarnated and become the Son of Man, expressing truths to judge and purify mankind. He has also suffered the persecution of the government and religious leaders. He's been shunned. This shows that people do not recognize God in the flesh and do not know Christ. It's easy to mistake God incarnate for a regular person. In the last days, Almighty God has come and has revealed the mysteries of the truth of incarnation. Let's read a passage from Almighty God's words. Great! Almighty God says, The meaning of incarnation is that God appears in the flesh, and He comes to work among man of His creation in the image of a flesh. So, for God to be incarnated, He must first be flesh. Flesh with normal humanity, this, at the very least, must be true. 
In fact, the implication of God's incarnation is that God lives and works in the flesh. God in his very essence becomes flesh, becomes a man. The Christ with normal humanity is a flesh in which the spirit is realized, possessing normal humanity, normal sense, and human thought. Being realized means God becoming man, the spirit becoming flesh. To put it plainly, it is when God himself inhabits a flesh with normal humanity. And through it, he expresses his divine work. This is what it means to be realized or incarnated. The incarnate God is called Christ, and Christ is the flesh donned by the Spirit of God. This flesh is unlike any man that is of the flesh. The difference is because Christ is not of flesh and blood, but is the incarnation of the Spirit. He has both a normal humanity and a complete divinity. His divinity is not possessed by any man. His normal humanity sustains all his normal activities in the flesh, while his divinity carries out the work of God himself. Amen. Thanks be to God. Brother Jung, you read the next passage. Okay. He who is God's incarnation shall hold the substance of God, and he who is God's incarnation shall hold the expression of God. Since God becomes flesh, he shall bring forth the work he must do. And since God becomes flesh, he shall express what he is, and shall be able to bring the truth to man, bestow life upon man, and show man the way. Flesh that does not contain the substance of God is surely not the incarnate God. Of this there is no doubt. To investigate whether it is God's incarnate flesh, man must determine this from the disposition he expresses and the words he speaks. Which is to say, whether or not it is God's incarnate flesh, and whether or not it is the true way must be judged from his substance. And so, in determining whether it is the flesh of God incarnate, the key is to pay attention to his substance, his work, his words, his disposition, and many more, rather than external appearance. Amen. Brothers and sisters, is that clear after reading Almighty God's words? God incarnate is God's spirit become flesh, becoming a person by taking on the flesh, appearing and working among mankind. Simply put, it is God's spirit wearing flesh as a person. From the outside, he looks like an average, completely normal person, not lofty or extraordinary. He just lives like a regular person. His interactions are practical. He lives among mankind. No one can see that he is God incarnate. Human eyes cannot see that Christ has the divine essence of God's spirit. People can just see that Christ can express the truth and unveil mysteries any place, any time. He can speak to mankind, express God's disposition, almightiness, and wisdom. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Christ can do the work of redeeming and saving mankind and his words can lead all of humanity. In the end, Christ's work and Christ's words can accomplish all things. So, his work and words are things no human can possess or achieve. Right, that's really true. Christ expresses the truth and does God's work from within normal humanity. People just see a regular person speaking and doing things. It's very practical, very genuine but we can determine from his work and from his words that this regular, normal son of man is God in the flesh, is Christ. Amen. Just like the Lord Jesus incarnate, he looked like a regular person, but he could express the truth anywhere, anytime. 
to supply and shepherd people, to resolve their difficulties. The Lord Jesus gave people the way of repentance. He was able to do the work of redemption and forgive man's sins. The truths that he expressed, the work he did, completely revealed God's authority and power. Yes. And God's loving and merciful disposition. Amen. So we can see that the Lord Jesus was God in the flesh. He was Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. That's true. So, everyone understand now? To determine if someone is God in the flesh is Christ. It's important to seek and investigate his work and words. If he can express the truth and God's disposition and do God's work, then he is God in the flesh. He is Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. This fellowship makes it much clearer. It certainly does. We all read a lot of Almighty God's words while investigating his work and understood the truth through fellowship, only then accepting Almighty God. Almighty God's words have unveiled the aims and mysteries of God's management of man, revealed how Satan has corrupted humans, how God is saving mankind step by step, how God makes overcomers in his judgment work in the last days, the Bible's inside story, the mysteries of God appearing and working in the flesh, how he sorts people with their kind, how he determines everyone's outcome and destination, how Christ's kingdom will be realized, and more. In expressing all truths to purify and save mankind, Almighty God judges and exposes people's satanic natures and dispositions of resisting God. We undergo the judgment of God's words and see how deeply corrupted we are by Satan. We have arrogant natures and give in to no one. We're self-important. Yes. How we live and what we reveal is no different from Satan. For years, I was a church leader. I was always scolding people. I felt that I understood the Bible and could give up everything to work for the Lord, so I was much better than others. No matter what strengths or good experience they had, I looked down on them. I was not only arrogant, but selfish and cunning. Everything I did was for my own name and status. I couldn't help but lie all the time and cheat for my own benefit. I believed in God and worked for Him, but it was to be blessed and rewarded, to make deals with Him. When God did something that I didn't like, that touched on my own interests, I would misunderstand Him and complain, or even resist and betray Him. I remember once, a relative fell ill and I complained. I work for God. Why won't He protect my family? I've suffered so much. Can't He give my family peace? Having believed in Almighty God, I reflected on my past failures in my faith. I saw that I was always revealing a satanic disposition, devoid of conscience. I was hardly even human. I began to hate myself, curse myself. I longed for God's salvation and began to pursue a change in disposition. By undergoing God's judgment, we have truly experienced that God's righteous disposition tolerates no offense. His holiness will not be sullied. Amen. We've had reverence for God, and we practice the truth and shun evil. Our dispositions have gradually changed. We show less corruption and we're more subdued. We don't trade with God. Rather, we have some true obedience to Him. These are the fruits of undergoing the judgment of Almighty God's words. Amen. 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 Thanks Thank to God. God. Brothers and sisters, just think. If it's not God incarnate, who could reveal the mysteries of God's management plan? Who could unveil the roots of man's sinfulness and do God's work of judgment in the last days? If it's not God incarnate's appearance and work, who could purify and save mankind? No one else could. 
Who could show to man God's holy, righteous disposition that tolerates no offense? Only God incarnate can. Yes. No one else could possibly do this. Yes. We can determine from Almighty God's work and words that He is the practical God incarnate. He's the appearance of Christ in the last days. Amen. Hearing your fellowship and testimony has brightened my heart. Thanks be to God. Almighty God expressing these truths really can purify and save mankind. Today we learned just how God saves people, how we can escape evil and gain salvation. If God himself didn't reveal the truth of these mysteries, no one could do it. Yes. Yes. Without hearing these truths Almighty God expressed, we would still be in the dark until who knows when. Yes. yes. Finally, we've heard God's voice today. I'm certain that Almighty God is the appearance of the Lord Jesus this cannot be wrong. Amen. Amen. Only God can express the truth, unveil mysteries, purify and save mankind to escape the bounds and strictures of sin. I truly thank Almighty God. Thanks. Thanks God. Even in dreams, I never thought that God had become flesh and worked for so long. Yes. yes. Almighty God's judgment of the last days has taught you many truths and your life dispositions have changed somewhat. I really admire you. We really are so pathetic. All this time, the pastors pulled wool over our eyes. We've believed their lies and believed that Almighty God is a regular person. We've gone along with them, denying and rejecting Him. Isn't this resisting God? It is. They're guiding us straight to hell. This could cost us our lives. Thanks to God's mercy, he sent you two to share the gospel. We finally heard God's voice and have been raptured. Thank God. Thank Almighty God. Thank God. Thank God. Everyone, let's read more of Almighty God's words. Great. Don't move, police! Get her! Don't let her get away! Shut up! They went this way! This way! Get them! Go! Come on. Hurry up. Let's uh, run. Uh, my foot is twisted. I can't walk. You two get out of here. Go! Hurry! Don't worry about Over me. There. Come on! Hurry up! Hurry up! Jump down. Don't let them get away! Don't make a sound. Hurry up. Ah. Get the freeze! Right there. Get the freeze! Stop running! Uh. How dare you? Uh. 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 How dare they? Uh. 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 I'll ask once more. Who'd you come to proselytize? Who's the leader of your church? Say something. Damn it. Damn! We've gone easy on you. Say something or you won't survive. Chief Wang. No confession? She's stubborn as a mule. She won't say a word. Yeah. She won't. <laughs> After the National Security Brigade tomorrow, You'll cooperate. Huh. Keep an eye on her. Yes, sir. Oh, God. I don't know what other torture the police have in store for me. 
God. No matter what I suffer, I will not give in to Satan. I only ask you to give me faith and strength. Go to the bathroom? You're such a pain. Hurry up. Sit down. Hey, Xiao Hu, my computer died. Can you help me? Okay. almost every day and brings endless trouble. Oh no! She ran off! What? Let's get her! Go! Thanks be to God. It's amazing you escaped. Even so, the police will be searching for us. In this situation, I don't know what will happen to everyone. Almighty God, the brothers and sisters here have only started investigating the true way, but are subject to the harassment of the Antichrist forces. They need our support, but the police are looking for us everywhere. God, I beg you, open a path, care for us. Guide us to bear witness and complete your commission. God. These people just accepted God's work in the last days. They lack a foundation. The pastors and elders are misleading them. If we can't water them soon, they may break. It's true. <sighs> Let's go. Talk to Sister Young, so we can meet with everyone in fellowship soon. Mm. Okay. 
Brother Liu, have the lookouts been arranged? Don't worry, it's taken care of. Good. Brother, you can just stack the boxes on top. The plastic crates can go below. We were so worried after you were arrested. Yes. We were all praying for you. We truly thank God you were able to escape from their hands. Brothers and sisters are all concerned for your Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, let's sit down and talk. Okay. Sister Su, Sister Chen, sit down. Have a seat. Have a seat. Everyone. The pastors and elders have been bothering you a lot, right? How are you holding up? Has it impacted you? Yeah. That day, we saw Pastor Sal bring the police. Everyone was furious. We denounced them for betraying the Lord and doing evil. Yes. yes. But they didn't care. They ran around intimidating us, saying anyone who believes in Eastern Lightning will be expelled. Anyone who preaches their way will be arrested. Yes, that's what they said. They seem so devout and always talk about treating people with love. We never imagined that not only would they not look into Almighty God's appearance and work, but would resist and condemn it, even reporting witnesses to the police. Yes. This is all true. They were even violent. This makes me think of when the Lord Jesus first appeared and worked. Didn't the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees join forces with the government to kill him? Didn't they arrest and persecute his disciples? How are the pastors and elders any different from them? They're not different at all. I think they're even more malicious. You're right. The Lord Jesus' appearance and work exposed the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees. Almighty God's appearance and work have exposed the religious leaders of the last days. God's work is so practical, so wise. It is. You're right. They're no different at all from the Jewish Pharisees. Right. They talk about loving the Lord and the flock, but in reality, they are fake. They cheat and deceive others. Yes. Without Almighty God's appearance and work to expose them, we would have never been able to see the truth. They're complete hypocrites. Yes. Yes. Many brothers and sisters, still don't have discernment regarding them. They truly believe that they serve the Lord, know the Bible well, and often interpret the Bible. They think they would recognize the Lord if He returned, and they could be the ones leading others to welcome Him. Yes. But in fact, the Lord has returned to do the work of judgment and has expressed many truths. Yet they can't hear God's voice. They don't know the Lord at all. Yes. So many good sheep from all sects have seen that Almighty God's words are the truth, are God's voice, and have turned toward Him. Yes. But the pastors don't look into God's work in the last days or lead us to welcome the Lord. Instead, they madly resist and condemn God's appearance. True. They don't enter the kingdom of heaven, so they block other people. That's true. Why is this? Why would they do that? Are they really Pharisees? Many can't understand these issues. That's right. That's right. Sister Chun, Sister Sue. Yes. Would you be able to fellowship on this? Explain it to us all? Of course. This is really important. A number of believers can't completely see this being able to discern religious Pharisees and pastors and seeing their hypocritical essences is not a simple matter. Why are some unable to hear the Lord's voice? It's because they don't know what is truth and really don't know that it's only expressed with God's coming. Why haven't those longing for the Lord's appearance accepted God's work of the last days? Mostly they're stuck on this. Is it okay if we discuss this further today? Yes. Most people in religious circles think that. The pastors and elders know the Bible well. They often interpret it for others. 
So when the Lord comes, they should know it, and they can lead believers to welcome him. That's why most people listen to them, and they don't look into it when they hear someone bearing witness to God's work of the last days. Don't you agree? This is ignorant and foolishness. Pastors and elders know the Bible and can explain it. Does that mean they understand the truth and know God? Does it mean that they fear God or actually obey Him? It doesn't. It doesn't. Does having Bible knowledge without understanding the truth count as knowing God? Does having knowledge of the Bible mean you really hear God's voice? Not necessarily, I think. The Pharisees all had knowledge of the Scripture, but they couldn't hear the Lord's voice. Remember, they're the ones that nailed Him to the cross. Yes. That's it. The Pharisees all knew the Scripture, but when the Lord Jesus appeared and worked expressing truths, why didn't they hear the Lord's voice? Why did they resist and condemn the Lord Jesus? Yeah, why? No one can see through these practical issues. Right. What is necessary to hear God's voice? One needs discernment on what is the truth and what is Bible knowledge. One must see that only God in the flesh can express the truth. Amen. Without these, how can anyone hear God's voice and accept his appearance and work? If people only have knowledge of the Bible, but do not recognize God's voice, and they do not fear God or seek the truth, then they cannot accept God's work. Those who by nature hate the truth and have vicious hearts, not only do not seek God's work, but will also certainly resist and condemn it. The Jewish Pharisees are classic examples. When the Lord Jesus appeared and worked, they heard that his words had authority and power, that they came from God, but they didn't bother with it. Instead, they hated and condemned him. This was because they didn't love the truth, but hated it. Yes. Just as the Lord Jesus said, But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not because my word has no place in you. Amen. The Lord's words were a blow to the Pharisees. Their nature to resist and condemn the Lord Jesus were exposed. The Pharisees hated the truth and God's way. They saw that the truths the Lord Jesus expressed gained him many followers, so felt that their own status and livings were threatened. They developed hatred for the Lord Jesus and believed that by nailing him up to the cross, no one else would follow him. Their status and livings would be preserved. This is why they hated the Lord Jesus, their murder of him. True. It exposed their demonic essences of hating the truth and being enemies of God. So that's what happened. It is. Everyone, now let's take a look at our current religious leaders. Why do they madly resist and condemn Almighty God? Could they have a personal grudge with Almighty God? Oh, no. They don't know Him at all. <laughs> then why is it? They're just like the Pharisees. They hate Almighty God because they hate the truth. That's right. It's because they've seen that Almighty God has expressed many truths, rocking the religious world. Many good sheep in all sects have turned toward Him. This is a direct threat to their status and livings. So they madly condemn and blaspheme Almighty God. They stop at nothing to hinder believers from reading His words and accepting Him. They even report those preaching to the police. This completely exposes their demonic essences of hating the truth and being enemies of God. You're right. Amen. That's right. It's so true. And now, we can see the root of their mad resistance and condemnation of Almighty God. Isn't that right? Yes. yes. Now, I finally understand. It turns out, the pastors and elders are the same as the Pharisees who resisted the Lord Jesus. They all hate the truth and resist God. No wonder they feel annoyed when they hear of someone bearing witness to Almighty God's appearance and work. And they see red when people are sharing the gospel of Almighty God's work. They believe they are the enemy. 
they lash out with words or fists or even call the police. Ah, uh, isn't this the very image of a demon? Yes. God's work really exposes people. Is their faith genuine or fake? Is their true nature good or evil? People are completely exposed by their attitudes towards the truth and Almighty God's appearance. Yes. I remember one time, I shared gospel with a pastor. I lent him a copy of God's words, the word appears in the flesh. A few days later, he said, I acknowledge that this is all the truth and that it comes from God, but I cannot accept it. If I did, I would certainly be condemned in religious circles, expelled from the church. Then I couldn't be a pastor. How would my family survive? How would we live? What kind of talk is that? I've heard quite a bit of this over my years of spreading the gospel. These are the thoughts of most religious leaders. Yes. What does it mean that they were able to express this? Most pastors and elders do not like the truth, but like name and status. They deny the truth to protect those things. They resist God. And then they condemn the appearance of God and his work. Yes. This fully exposes their satanic natures of disgust and hatred of the truth. Amen. Amen. Unfortunately, there are very few people in the entire religious world who can see their true face. And there are even fewer who are able to discern that they are acting like hypocrites, based on the Lord Jesus' words exposing and condemning the Pharisees. Yes. yes. This is people's ignorance and foolishness. Yes, that's exactly right. It really is foolish. Yes. God appearing and working in the flesh these two times have exposed the true essence of religious leaders resisting God. Yes. Let's read a few passages of the Lord Jesus' words. Great. Everyone, turn to Matthew 23, 13 and 23, 15. Who would like to read? I'd like to. Okay. The Lord Jesus said, But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Amen. Amen. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Amen. Now let's look at verses 24, 25, and 33, 34. You blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Amen. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Why, behold, I send to you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you whip in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Amen. Amen. Everyone, now let's read a few passages of Almighty God's words. Okay. Brother Lee, here. Thank God. Brother Jung. I truly thank God. Thanks to God. Almighty God says, Do you wish to know the root of why the Pharisees opposed Jesus? Do you wish to know the substance of the Pharisees? They opposed Jesus because they did not know the direction of the Holy Spirit's work. Because they did not know the way of truth spoken by Jesus. And furthermore, because they did not understand the Messiah. And since they had never seen the Messiah and had never been in the company of the Messiah, they made the mistake of paying empty tribute to the name of the Messiah, while opposing the substance of the Messiah by any means. 
These Pharisees in substance were stubborn, arrogant, and did not obey the truth. The principle of their belief in God is, no matter how profound your preaching, no matter how high your authority, you are not Christ unless you are called the Messiah. Are these views not preposterous and ridiculous? Amen. I can read now. Those who read the Bible in grand churches recite the Bible every day, yet not one understands the purpose of God's work. Not one is able to know God. Moreover, not one is in accord with the heart of God. They are all worthless, vile men, each standing on high to teach God. Though they brandish the name of God, they willfully oppose Him. Though they label themselves believers of God, they are ones who eat the flesh and drink the blood of man. All such men are devils who devour the soul of man, demons who purposefully disturb those who try to step onto the right path, and stumbling blocks that impede the path of those who seek God. Though they are of robust flesh, how are their followers to know that they are antichrists, who lead man in opposition to God? How are they to know that they are living devils who specially seek souls to devour? Amen. I'll read a passage. Look at the leaders of every denomination and sect. They are all arrogant and self-right. And they interpret the Bible out of context and according to their own imagination. They all rely on gifts and erudition to do their work. If they were incapable of preaching anything, would those people follow them? They do, after all, possess some learning and can speak a little of doctrine, or know how to win over others, and how to use some artifices through which they have brought people before themselves, and have deceived them. Nominally, those people believe in God, but in reality, they follow their leaders. If they encounter those who preach the true way, some of them would say, we have to consult our leader about our belief in God they require someone's consent to believe in God? Is that not a problem? What have those leaders become then? Have they not become Pharisees, false shepherds, antichrists, and stumbling blocks to people's acceptance of the true way? Amen. Amen. The pastors and elders are our stumbling blocks to accepting the true way. It's God who knows man inside and out. Long ago, God exposed the hypocritical essences of the Pharisees. But reading the Bible for years, we still don't understand. That's true. That's true. That's true. Almighty God has come, exposing and dissecting the religious leaders' hypocritical essences, their resistance to God and their evil ways. We have finally understood what the Lord Jesus said in the Age of Grace. Yes. We corrupt people are dull-witted. Yes. So All the truths Almighty God has expressed in the last days have shown God's righteous disposition tolerates no offense. He's become flesh twice now. Why has He always exposed the religious leaders, the ones who resist God? Tell us why. Yeah. These Pharisees, pastors, and elders are good at disguising themselves, so it's hard to tell. They've believed in God for years. They have Bible knowledge and no theology. They show off and establish themselves by interpreting the Bible for others, gaining the admiration of others. They seem pious on the outside, but inside they do not fear or obey God. They have some good behaviors, though, and they often pray with and bless people and instruct them to do good things, observe religious rituals and rules. But all of this is for show. They have never exalted or testified to God. They do not seek God's will from His words, and they do not guide believers to practice God's words or observe His commandments. They don't understand how to practice God's words themselves. They talk about Bible knowledge and literal doctrines to gain admiration. It's misleading. <sighs> they have no reverence or obedience for God. Their actions long ago went astray of God's way. 
But do many religious people have discernment on them? They don't. They don't. They mostly think of them as put in place by God, like spiritual guardians. They listen to everything they say, even important things that relate to whether they will be allowed to enter the kingdom of heaven or not. They leave everything up to the pastor. When asked to report those who witness God's work of the last days to the police, they just go along with it. They're unable to judge whether the pastors and elders' actions are in line with the Bible, with the Lord's words. Yes. That's true. Yes. Do you think that they actually believe in God or in their pastors? It's not believing in God, it's believing in the religious leaders. Don't these leaders bring people in front of themselves, not God? Yes. yes. Aren't they trying to replace God in people's hearts? Yes, yes they are. Yes. That's so true. God's people are clearly his sheep. Now that God has returned and is uttering the truth to save man, the pastors and elders are not returning his sheep, but they still insist on controlling them. They resist and condemn God's work of the last days. They bar believers from following the true way. Isn't that fighting with God over his chosen people? Yes. Isn't this defying God and setting up their own private kingdom? Yes. Aren't these antichrists who are enemies to God? That's totally true. Yes. That's exactly it. The Bible says, And as you've heard that antichrist shall come, even now there are many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Amen. For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Amen. The religious Pharisees, pastors, and elders don't acknowledge God will return to flesh. They deny Christ incarnate. They see that Christ expresses the truth and does the work of redemption and salvation of mankind, but still hate and resist Him. Aren't they antichrists, enemies of Christ? Would you say that these antichrists should be cursed? Yes. They are. Curse them. Reject them. If God didn't expose these Pharisees, pastors, and elders, could God's chosen people see through their God-defying nature? No. What about escaping the pastor's control and accepting God's appearance and work? No. no. So now, can we all clearly see the truth of their hypocrisy and resistance to God? Yes. We have discernment through this kind of fellowship. After hearing this, I finally see my own foolishness and ignorance. The Lord Jesus cursed the Pharisees long ago, but I never compared that to the pastors or the elders. I didn't judge them based on the Lord's words. I blindly adored them. Without Almighty God expressing these truths and doing the work of judgment, we would be lifelong believers without seeing that they are the Antichrist of the last days. Yes. Yes. Stupidly, we've seen them as spiritual guardians and have followed everything they say. We've been resisting God without knowing it. They nearly led us into hell. God really cares for us. This fellowship is wonderful. The more I hear, the brighter I feel. They are constantly explaining the Bible and theology to us. Not only have they not brought us in front of God, but have led us to resist God. Isn't this pushing us toward hell? It is. it is. To maintain their status, the pastors and elders have harmed so many without hesitation. They're so vicious. They should be cursed. They are modern Pharisees. They should be cursed. Thank God. I have also seen that I can't gain any truth by following them in my faith. I will be punished because I followed them in resisting God. That's the truth. Yes. He's right. Without God's mercy, moving brothers and sisters to testify to his last day's work over and over again, I don't know when we would finally hear God's voice and be brought before God. Yes. Thank God. 
The disaster is nearly upon us. Everyone is in danger. If we still don't hear God's voice, we'll fall into disaster. Devastating. Yes. yes. There's no way we could enter God's kingdom. Right. Right. The pastors and elders are despicable. Yes. Yes. We must reject them and accept Almighty God. Amen. Right. Reject Satan. Follow Christ. Amen. Thank Almighty God. Thanks be to God. Yes. Sister Chun, Sister Sue, the police are looking everywhere for you. It's too dangerous for you to keep preaching here. Yes. Yes. Well, our work of spreading the gospel here is pretty much done. We should move on now. The Communist Party has a stranglehold on China. Over these years of preaching, they've continued to pursue us. I don't know how many places we've run to. Wherever we go, we bring the gospel. This is God's wisdom. That's right. Have you seen this woman? No, I haven't. Me neither. If you see her, let me know right away. Have you seen this person? No. It's me, Xiao He. Hurry, come inside. Oh, hello. We just had a close one. Apparently, I'll need this disguise whenever I go out. What, you saw the police? Yes, they had Sister Chen's photo and were asking about her. Oh? Here, sit down. Please, sit down. I can't believe they're searching here. Yeah. It's really dangerous for you here. I think you should go hide somewhere else. Mm. All of China is controlled so fiercely by the CCP. There's no way in, no way out. It's like a demon's prison. Everywhere you go will be dangerous. Yes. The CCP won't stop. This demon won't rest until they've gotten rid of all Christians. Yes. Hey, Sister Chen. 
With the police looking for you, have you thought of escaping the country? That's right. Oh, yes! The Lord Jesus said, but when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another. If you flee to a democratic country, there will be human rights and religious freedom. You'll be able to continue to spread the gospel of the kingdom. It would be so wonderful if you could go abroad. Then you wouldn't need to always be in hiding or live in fear. Yes. That has occurred to me. But is it possible? Thinking of when the Lord Jesus was working, Christians suffered persecution and murder by the Jewish faith and the Romans. They scattered across the world and brought the Lord Jesus' gospel to every corner of the globe. This is how God worked to expand the work of the gospel. Almighty God is doing the work of the last days and has suffered mad suppression and hunts by the Chinese government. God is expanding the gospel of the kingdom. This is how he is doing it. Hmm. Yes. If there's a way, I'd be willing to go abroad to spread the gospel. I will figure something out. Having worked in the government for years, I know people. Let's pray to God first, and then hand this over to him. Thanks to God. Great. Thanks, Thanks, to, Thanks God. to God. Here, have some water, Sister Hu. Here. Are you aware of the burden you shoulder, your commission, and your responsibility? Where is your historic sense of mission? What plans do you have for the progress of the next step of work? How many people are waiting for you to be their shepherd? Is your task a heavy one? more unworthy of God who gives us everything. 